Bats are fascinating creatures, the only mammal gifted with true flight. Alberta is home to nine species of bats. All Alberta bat species are insectivores, consuming their body weight in mosquitoes and other pest insects every night. They provide excellent natural pest control. Even though we rarely see these elusive nocturnal animals, bats are actually one of the most common types of urban wildlife. In natural landscapes, bats like to roost in sheltered places like hollow trees or caves. But as urban areas have overtaken wild spaces, bats have taken to roosting in buildings and other human-built structures. This is not always a safe or stable solution for the bats. You can help create a safe, bat-friendly space in your own backyard by building a bat house. Today, we're going to show you how to build a multi-chamber bat nursery, which makes a great roosting spot for species like the big brown bat and the little brown myotis, an endangered species that would really appreciate the support. Let's take you through the steps to build your own four-chamber bat nursery. Before you start, be sure to download the materials and tools list, cutting diagrams, and instructions from the Nature Alberta website. The materials listed are actually enough to build two bat houses. Ryan and Kelsey here will take you through the build today, so follow along. First, we need to cut our back, roof, and front pieces from the 4 foot by 4 foot half inch plywood. A table saw is necessary for this project, but if you don't have one, many hardware stores can cut the pieces for you. Mark your cuts according to the cutting diagram. Your 4x4 plywood slab will give you two 17.5 by 31 inch back pieces, two 17.5 by 17 upper front pieces, two 5.5 by 17 lower front pieces, and two 6.5 by 20 inch roof pieces. Remember to set your saw blade to 25 degrees to cut the roof segments. Next, move on to the 3 8 inch plywood and we'll cut out the interior partitions. Cut the 4x4 slab into 6 22 inch by 16 inch partitions. Next, cut your 1x6x8 foot board to make the side pieces and roof spacers. Set your saw blade to 25 degrees and rip a 4 inch wide section lengthwise down the board. It's easier to rip if the 8 foot board is cut into two 4 foot lengths. Now, reset the saw blade to zero degrees and slice the angled edge off the four inch board so that it's flat. Now, using a compound miter saw, cut the angled roof spacers into 16 inch lengths. While you're here, cut the one by one inch pieces into six 20 inch lengths, two 10 inch lengths, and two five inch lengths. These will be your side spacers. Set the miter saw to 25 degrees and cut the 1 by 4 inch side pieces to 25 inches in length. Moving back to the table saw, set the blade height to half an inch and mark a 6 inch vent notch into the long side of the side pieces 5 inches from the bottom. Notch both at the same time by clamping the two side pieces together. Now cut out the side vents using the table saw. Remove any remaining rough areas with a chisel. We need to notch 1 8 to 1 quarter inch deep grooves into all inside pieces of the bat nursery so that the bats can grip onto it when inside. Set your table saw blade height to 1 8 of an inch and make blade width notches every half inch horizontally along both sides of all partition pieces and the inside of the back and front pieces. Finally, using a hole saw, cut two 1 and a quarter inch passage holes near the top of the partitions. Now that all your wood is cut, apply two coats of black water-based wood stain to all interior grooved pieces. When that dries, you're ready to assemble. So grab your cordless drill, impact driver, caulker wood glue, and hardware. We'll build up the bat nursery in layers. Starting with the back piece, we'll glue the side pieces on and screw them into place with the 1 and 5 8 inch screws. Make sure all sides and corners are flush. Next, screw in the five inch and 10 inch one by one spacers, flush with the opening of the vent using the one inch screws. It's important to drill pilot holes before inserting the screws as the small pieces of wood can split easily. Once the spacers are mounted, we can mount the first partition piece. 
Add a small bead of glue or caulk, and then mount the partitions using one inch screws. Make sure the top is flush with the slope of the roof so that the roof can sit evenly. Now continue with the next layers, drilling pilot holes and screwing in the 20 inch spacers flush with the bottom of each partition. Once the final spacers are mounted, we're ready to mount the front pieces. Apply glue or caulk, then screw these into the side pieces using 1 and 5 8 inch screws. Repeat with the front lower piece. With the lower piece sitting flush with the bottom of the side piece, there should be a small gap for ventilation between the two front pieces. Apply glue or caulk, then screw the lower piece into place using the 1 and 5 8 inch screws. Finally, we can mount the roof using glue or caulk and the 1 and 5 8 inch screws. Now that the bat nursery is assembled, it's ready to be painted. It can be painted black or any dark color using exterior grade paint. And there you go! You've successfully built your own four chamber bat nursery. Placing your bat house up high makes it easier for bats to access and helps keep them safe from predators. They should be at least three to four meters above the ground. Bats like houses mounted on the sides of buildings, preferably facing east. Bat droppings will fall below, so place the house above a garden bed or shrubbery. Mounting your bat box on a pole is another good option. You can even mount tube boxes back to back to give the bats access to warmer or cooler shelter. Tree mounting is another option, but the trunk has to be unobstructed so the bats can come and go through open space and there are no nearby branches for predators to use. It's also a good idea to wrap a band of sheet metal or smooth plastic at least 45 to 60 centimeters wide around the polar tree right below the bat house to keep climbing predators out. Bats don't make nests, so your bat box shouldn't require much maintenance. Just give it an occasional look, when no one's home, to make sure the house is in good shape and free of wasp nests. You can make your yard bat friendly by keeping artificial night lighting to a minimum. Use motion sensor lights and aim them downward. Put covers or screens on rain barrels, chimneys, and vents to keep bats out of unsafe places. And avoid chemical pesticides and fertilizers that can end up in their food and water supply. Talk to your neighbors about making their yards bat friendly too, and maybe even building their own bat houses. For more ideas to encourage biodiversity in your backyard, download the Urban Nature Initiative Checklist from naturealberta.ca.